I photographed this, and actually I remember there was like a really nasty ashtray that I made a big deal that I had to photograph um, because I cared about making the art pictures for myself before making the pictures that I knew the client would want. Um, this one's, again, close to home. This is the roller rink I used to go to when I was a kid, um, when I was a preteen, actually. So you've, I have a lot of memories of this place, of um, just all that longing yet despair <laughs> of, of being that age. Um, and actually, this wall, this is, this is definitely one of those pictures where I feel like I found a ready-made sort of, you know, Duchampian art object, um, uh, you know, or a mural that's like already on the wall, ready and framed for me to photograph. I mean, I know that I'm doing something to it by photographing it, by framing it this way, um, by even noticing it. Um, but I am really interested in that found object. And that also goes back to the Dada's poetry thing, the found words. Um, but this is kind of great because... You know, I always, because I've seen this thing my whole life, I just thought, oh, it's a wall piece. It goes along with the music. Um, it, nothing seems strange about it to me. And then I saw um, the John Travolta, uh, Staying Alive. And this is a dance floor from the 70s. But the roller rink, I guess because it's a roller rink and they need the floor to be wood, he put it on the wall instead of it being the dance floor. So this, when the music plays, these lights flash on and off. And it was the exact same floor in uh, Staying Alive, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, back to Coney Island. Um, this is a mannequin at a haunted graveyard a um, massive haunted house complex uh, in Connecticut. Actually, I think this was the very first place I ever photographed, and I was there for hours. I was obsessed. And um, uh, the guy who let me photograph, when I came out, finally, he was asleep in a hearse, and I thought he was dead <laughs> but because of everything I'd just seen and gone through. Um, but apparently he was just sick, but he didn't want to leave me there because God knows what I would do. So um, he just took a little nap. But, um, you know, you don't really see people in this work. This is one of the, you know, only references to a human being, this mannequin making this gesture. Um, this is actually a monk in the catacomb part of the haunted house. Um, and if you, in the book, it's easier to see, but the background is this really crappy press board. I don't really know the real term for it, but it's that transient sort of building material that, you know, you throw up for a month in October and you take it down and throw it in a warehouse. Um, and I just, I love that, that idea that these, these places are just so fleeting, yet every year they, they repeat, they sort of cycle and come back over and over again. How are we doing on time? Okay. Uh, Spookarama, I think, or Dante's Inferno. Dante's Inferno, which is gone. It was at Astroland. Um, the Swingers Club in Daytona Beach, the same place as the stripper pole with the um, dartboard. Um, if you look at the titles in the back, you will see... Um, a few places repeat themselves. They reappear. Um, and like I said, the work is from 99 to, I'd, I think the latest picture is probably 07. Uh, this one being 05. Um, and I really, you know, this work started when I was in my 20s, in graduate school, struggling. Um, up until this point, my work was very, very peopled. I photographed people all the time. And um, I had worked for Nan Golden, and Larry Fink was my teacher in undergrad. And they're, if you know their work, they're both people photographers. Um, and I really, a, a big change happened when I went to school and to, to really uh, focus in. And one of, the, um, one of the things that I learned there and that, that was said to me was by a, a previous teacher, came as a visiting artist, Stephen Shore, and he said that my work before was like snapshots. He said that before it was um, 
uh, subject driven. So the thing in front of you, there it is. Um, and that now, or at least this was to, in the year 2000, um, that he felt like the work was um, uh, photographic. You know, it wasn't, and yes, there's a thing plunked down in the center, or, you know, I'm photographing it, looking at it in a very deadpan way. Um, but there, there are concerns that weren't there before about light, about framing, and about the transformation of a scene um, by the way that you photograph it. Um, this is the movie theater from Governor's Island. So the, the end of the book, which we're getting to now, um, starts to really take sort of a darker turn. I mean, it's pretty dark throughout, but, um, but I think it's a little bit more obvious. Um, and I think that, um, I think that in the end, really, um, what, you know, there isn't a thesis, but, there, but what, something I realized is that, you know, in the end, th even the idea of escape is a failure, and you can never really escape reality. Um, and there's a quote by um, the author of uh, Little Prince, Antoine uh, Saint-Exupéry, um, escape has never led anywhere. Um, and that's within a quote that, I'll just read a little bit of it. There is a cheap literature that speaks to us of the need of escape. It is true that when we travel we are in search of distance, but distance is not to be found. It melts away, and escape has never led anywhere. The moment a man finds he must play the races, go to the Arctic, or make war in order to feel himself alive... That man has, be has begun the spin, to spin the strands that bind him to other men and the world. But what wretched strands. Um, but I love that. Escape has never led anywhere. And I found that quote after editing the book. At the very end, I was, I, I was without a title, actually. Um, and I was just, you know, I was Googling escape, escapism. Like, it was just crazy and, and brainstorming. Um, and in my Googling, I found all these great quotes about escape, um, including that one. Um, and then another um, title I had thought about was On Escape, which is taken from a Baudelaire writing about um, opium addiction, which I thought, oh, my God, it's perfect. Um, it fits... You know, I loved that all these things I was finding were all sort of fitting together. Um, other titles I'll just share with you that I bandied about. Um, Pictures of the Gone World, which is a, a poetry book by uh, Lawrence Ferlinghetti. Um, World of Mirth, I was really liking. But no one knows what that is. Um, it's a reference to a traveling circus in the 40s maybe the 30s too, which actually is kind of perfect again. Um, but no one got the reference. And um, I love the word mirth because I've always misunderstood it because it's such an ugly word. I thought it must, you know, growing up I thought it must mean something really bad, but it actually just means, you know, happiness and gayness. Um, dreamland, you know, Coney Island. Um, I'm a Bruce Springsteen fan, so blinded by the light. Um, but one of the photographs that you saw um, earlier on, which is the back of the, the book, is Fun and Games, and it's an arcade in uh, Seaside Heights. Um, I also found out that it's the name of a lot of arcades, apparently. Um, and it was a title that... Um, when I was sharing the work with other photographers and um, critics, uh, nobody was getting. And then I, I was lucky enough to meet Robert Adams, and I told him the title, and he said, that's a great title. And I said, well, all right, everyone else hates it, but Robert Adams likes it, so that's what we're going to go with. And I like it, too, because of the, the phrase, it's all fun and games until someone loses an eye, which is actually an ancient Roman phrase, I believe, um, from the gladiatorial contest. Um, there's just a few more pictures. I just wanted to stop on this one. Um, this is Niagara Falls on the U.S. side. Um, it's a